is going to the grave with greedy, greedy, blind generation pursuing cars, pursuing houses. None has ever gone to that man. He's going down to the grave with something he must not go down with. There's something bigger than a car. There's something bigger than a house. There's something bigger than money. Something more than gold. The spirit of God in the heart of a man. Is, we, we carry more than gold. So we can't hold on to men because of what they can give. Giving fights over us. There's a realm where giving ought to fight over you. Was it not a man that was fighting today to give to me? I didn't answer. So he called, he said, give me the right number. I'm not even after him calling me. I just know if I give to that man, I will never be the same. Carry something. As a girl, carry something that a man can't sleep after asking you after your name. How can a man sleep with you and then you are begging him? What is this that you carry? Then you are threatening us with the post on Facebook. I remain with my Jesus. One man saw a woman who had been making that statement, saying, I am I'm left with the Lord. And <laughs> so, so so a man saw him with a certain man and said, Hey Dada, Salimia Yesu. What do you mean? He said, But I heard you say the other day, Umebakina Yesu. Salimia Yesu. Shout, I can't be the same. The God of my fathers is dawning on my life. The grace that my fathers walked in is dawning on my life. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the generation that will seek to know the demand of divinity and give in to the demand of divinity and function from above, not from economical level. We want to function from somewhere. God is real. Grace is real. It is that divine tool that is beyond repentance. David repented. I said yesterday. <laughs> but repentance doesn't take the place of sacrifice. A sacrifice is that dimension you engage when pleading mercy. When, when, when you have plead, pleaded mercy, you have used jargons, you have used spiritual vocabularies, and nothing has worked. When tapping grace, and all your jargons are born no fruit, it is time to understand sacrifice. Write this. What is a sacrifice? The background scripture is 2 Samuel 24. A sacrifice is giving that chooses no shortcuts, allows no pity. Tomorrow, uh, I will go ensure that the base beam, etiene mukurunzinza, mukurunzinza, yes, ensure that the base beam faces me. Don't deny me my sweetness. Don't take my sweetness for we. For weakness. Anyway, we'll do that tomorrow. I noted you who janjo natumia. But I know we'll get that that thing that you said we need to get. I know that's why you did that. But I'm also a technician in my own way. You know, I never went to school, but I have wisdom. Eh? I'm a technician in my own capacity. <laughs> Look at this. It is that dimension, ladies and gentlemen. It is it is that giving that has no shortcuts, allows no pity. And goes all the way. Look at verse 21 to verse number 23 of 2 Samuel 24. It is giving that chooses no shortcuts. Allows no pity. And goes all the way. Look at it from verse 21. Many believers love shortcuts. That's why they live a... If you love shortcuts, you will live a very short life. Let me give you examples I've seen. I've seen men of God invite a man that has grace. 
then they want to bring other men of God to help them host the man. And one even asked me, Pastor Lo, what have you given him? We want to know so that we determine, so that we don't overgive. We have bills to pay. I told him, don't give him anything. I'll give him what he needs. We love shortcuts. That's where things like, someone wrote me the other day, with all humility, that his spiritual children have come together that they want to buy him a car. But the spiritual children have told him to look for other people to put in an input so that they see what is the balance. They, they iron it out. Christians. It's like asking the village to help you build a house for your father. When your father did not ask anybody, when he was selling his cows, selling his land to take you to school, We love shortcuts. I went to preach somewhere. A member of that ministry had a hotel. Those in the security will tell you. So they took me. To, I didn't have a problem. They took me there to sleep there. A television was hung on the roof. I don't despise. But this is what I believe. I believe in respecting people where God has put them. If I bring Benihin here, I will handle him like Benihin. Don't demand Benihin to treat him like a preacher from the wrong side of the road. Respect the hand of God on men. Don't listen. I don't know how I'll teach you this. So, I didn't say anything. You know me. Because I don't preach for, I preach for none of those things. Listen, those of you listening, I don't send requirements that if you want to host me, you must put me in a seven-star hotel. You must bring this kind of a car to come and pick me. You must send this kind of a flight ticket. If anybody tells you that is a lie, I don't ask for those things. So I arrived, but that is not an excuse for you to take a man of God and put him in a lodging. And then you say, now, it is one thing when the lodging is what you can afford. But it is dangerous to do that because you want to save. There's a difference between a lodging and a hotel room. What do you want me to explain? A lodging has two sleepers that are not of the same color. Because they don't trust people who sleep there. You can even get a red towel in a lodging. A red towel. I've slept in a lodging before I know. When I went to preach. One time somebody left me in the lodging with mama. Invited us and couldn't pay the bills and ran away. We were stuck in the lodging for two days with my wife. The things preachers do. Then they wonder why ministry will go opposite direction. So when we arrived. My guys looked at it. I didn't say, they are the ones that said, man of God, you can't sleep here. I said, why is a hotel? They said, no, sir, no, no. Then we asked from there, which is the best hotel in this town? They said, there's one where one blah, blah, blah sleeps there. Then I didn't say, my guys said, I think that's where we are going. We got there. They said, yeah, Papa, this is the place. I pulled out my card. Are paid for all the days. So my host sent his people to the place where he thought I'm sleeping to pick me for the service. So when we got to the service, he was amazed that I didn't talk about it. So his worry was, how much is this man going to ask for? The first night of the meeting, a woman was outside the meeting and, and, and wanted to see me. I said, Bishop, these are your people. Talk to the person. I said, no, no. The person says he must. I said, bring him. Bring the person in. The person already came with 300,000. Said, I'm so touched the first night. The, the, her past, the pastor was looking at her. I said, this one, they are wealthy. Never gives. What is this? I said nothing about it. I claim nothing on it. I left it there. Because when you know God, your eyes don't flash at what has come. I told him I came to build your ministry. I didn't come to enrich myself. Because when God wants to give me, you don't have anything to give me. I told him that. That 
that meeting was heavy. Then towards the, towards the end of the meeting, he said, man of God, we sat down yesterday. We are thinking of how much we need to pay your hotel. I told him, don't worry, I already paid. Okay, then the guys, the team that came, I said, don't worry, I already paid. And then, man of God, you know, lazima ufike nyumbani na sukari. I told him, I don't even take sugar, I take honey. We don't take it at home. I was just trying to correct his mindset. We don't take it. He said, then, man of God, hey, tell me, so how are we going to release you? I said, the same way I came is the same way you release me. Which other way do you want to release me? That, uh, you know, you know. I said, build the ministry. Relax. I don't want to say what happened on Monday in that meeting. Young ministers listening, I'm as young as you are. If you want to attain a certain level of grace, remove your eyes from offerings and what people can give you when they invite you. And sitting at a corner somewhere making demands, musicians that put 100,000 in my account, what can 100 do in the first place? Pastor, one day, one man, <laughs> you know, the problem is, if you have not seen these things, they are everything to you. If you have seen them, Christ will mean everything to you. What did I say? Then Arauna said, why has my Lord the King come to his servant? Now, now listen, David never wanted a shortcut. If you love shortcuts, there is a realm you can't attain. Arona said, why has my Lord the King come to his servant and David said to buy the threshing floor from you to build an altar to the Lord that the plague may be, may be withdrawn from the people? Verse 22. Look at this. Now, Arauna say to David, let my Lord the King take and offer up whatever seems good to him. Look, here are the oxen for burnt sacrifice and threshing implements and the yokes of the oxen for the wood. Verse 23. All these, O King, Arauna has given to the King. And Arauna say to the King, may the Lord your God accept you. 24. Then the King say to Arauna, no! is an offering that does not accept a shortcut. Said no. But I will surely buy it from you for a price. Nor will I offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God with that which costs me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. What is a sacrifice? It is that giving that refuses shortcuts. There must come a day you go before God and you tell God, I refuse to be pampered. I refuse a shortcut. I want to do something I can feel. This is what I always tell people. What you can't feel, God did not feel it. What you didn't feel when you are parting ways with it, God didn't feel it. What you didn't feel the pain, heaven didn't feel it. That's why heaven came for Isaac. While Ishmael was there. If you feel it, heaven feels it. Write this down. Ha. Sacrifice. It is a costly offering. This is the most powerful part of it. As I begin to close. It is a costly offering. Neither will I offer up sacrifices. the Lord my God with that which costs me nothing. Believers are running away from ministries because they don't want to pay the price. People want where the price has been paid. And where the price has been paid there's no reward to carry. The man who pays your price will carry your reward. I've seen people miss their reward like that. Man of God, we have this great man of God coming, help us host him. The moment I pay three quarters of the bills of a minister you brought, don't brag you carried anything. I carried it. Can I show you this? Put it there, Paul said, if we have sown spiritual things to you, the next thing you pass 
start with, when a man releases a spiritual thing to you, is a material thing. And Paul is the one who said that. So the man that takes care of a minister materially in a meeting goes with the spiritual deposit the minister came with. It can never be any other way. Those who come there with the spirit of Kerere and say, man of God, I've been praying for you since you started preaching. In this meeting, I you'll have his prayers. <laughs> I was in Narok town. I preached for one week, I think so. Then they gave and gave and then I told them, I told the pastor, you know you've been going through a lot of things. So in this meeting, every money you could have given me, please just use it for a holiday. Ha! May you get there. We were laying the, we were, we were erecting this tent. And I knew that I knew the significance of Narok. Then all bishops and pastors came together in the city. I had a session with them. Then I commanded bishops and pastors, we raised a certain level of offering. And I told them, the man of God, Bishop Segel, was a gateway into Maasai land. I want this money to be sent to his wife. That is how I'll receive an offering. So I received an offering in his name. Then I gave back everything to the pastor who hosted. I said, go for a holiday. I called his elders and I said, you see this money? Let your pastor go for a holiday. Then I said, I asked a question. How many of you would want to see money? A number of people raised their hands. I said, I know your pastor has already paid my bills and all that. I don't even think he paid. I paid. But I said, I want you guys to give money equivalent to that. And I asked for a certain amount of money and people gave and I said this, if you are just a few of you that will do that, tomorrow morning when I leave my hotel, be the first one to touch the bed I slept in. You have to be more than confident to say those things. At around 4 a.m., four people are waiting in the parking. As soon as we checked out, the first brother that went in did not touch the bed, slept on the bed and covered himself. So the other guys were waiting for him to come out. Real story. He didn't come out. He had been trying to get tenders with the county government. Things were very bad with him. Business was going down. At around 10 a.m., he got a call from the county government that would elevate his status by hundreds of millions. As he was giving the testimony on Sunday, the whole church said, we are going to book all the hotels in town and bring pastor. He sleeps here one night, he sleeps here one night, he sleeps here one night, so that it can happen to us. Do you know, the demand that I go back brought a trouble between me and the pastor. Because I told him it doesn't go like that. It's not something we can just plan like that. It is divine. Thank God he understood. Listen, and listen to me very well, those of you watching and those who are here. If I want to play games, making hundreds of millions will not be a problem. But may I be counted that I used this grace judiciously before God. Because money is not God's problem. Material things are not God's problem. Plots of land are not God's problem. Those are small things. Listen. So Paul said, I'm about to finish. If we have sown spiritual things to you, he asked a question, is it a great thing if we reap material things. Now listen, get the concept. When a man carries spiritual things and comes into a city, the next thing you should do is not to say you, pray for, you prayed for him. Run with your material support. Dear ministers listening, if a man carries a spiritual thing over his life and you can tell and you have witnessed and you have seen men and women, raise my mic a bit, and you have seen men and women benefit from it, don't go there, Nakerere, we are praying for you, sir. More grace, sir. May the Lord multiply your anointing, sir. You that does not even have the anointing, how can you pray for the multiplication of another anointing? Watch a Nakerere, 
There are things I can't comment on men who have gone ahead of me. How do I tell some men more grace, sir? The Lord multiply your anointing, sir. Your oil will not run dry, sir. That, sir, the Lord will sustain you, sir. Who put you there? There are some things don't say. It makes you look very ignorant. When a man carries spiritual deposit, I commit myself with material things. Look at verse 12. I close on this. Then Paul said, if others are partakers of this right over you, are we not even more? Nevertheless, we have not used this right, but endure all things lest we hinder the gospel because people get offended over such matters. So Paul decided to endure and said, well, this is the, this is the secret but if I engaged you, you'd get, you'd get offended. People get offended when they hear about offerings. So Paul said, I have not used any of that. But if you go to Philippians, because the Philippian church was a church, he opened his heart to them. He took what they had. And he said, my God will supply. Go, message translation of verse 12 and 13. What is a sacrifice? Oh, So if we have planted spiritual seed among you, is it out of line to expect a meal from, or two from you? Which means when a man carries spiritual things, don't pray for him. Get committed with the meal. And believers are still looking for a shortcut out of that. I've seen pastors fight over a love offering. The, 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 the minister that was hosted is asking, is this all that came? Yes, sir, this is all that came. Okay, bring everything. Let's calculate. Where, how did we get there? The moment it becomes, it gets there, it has become a curse. One time somebody asked, man of God, are you going to use business class or economy? I said business. He said, we were prepared for economy. I said, pay economy. He said, oh, man of God, no problem. We can try. I said, pay economy. In fact, don't pay. Let me pay. So I paid my way. I told him, you have money for the hotel, can I pay? He said, man of God, it hasn't come to that. Because if you don't value what I carry, I respect it. And I know if I pay for it and pay my way, everything that will happen in that meeting, I'll carry the blessing back. And so a great man visited your ministry and carried everything he came with and went back. He landed back and things began to change for him. And you that he visited, you are telling him, sir, since you left, remember us in prayer. It's an insult for a man of God to leave your house, stayed with you, and then you are sending prayer after he's gone. It means there's something you didn't understand. And look at this. When Jesus came to their village, he performed very few miracles and left. You know why? Because the atmosphere was full of dishonor. They didn't believe in what he carried. So he couldn't stay there long. The moment you are trying to bring in a man that has grace, and you are already debating it, you are looking at it as a burden, you have lost it. What is a sacrifice? Raise your hands and say, Father, give me wisdom. I will not miss what God has prepared. Look at this. It is a costly offering. Last but not least. It is giving, write this down, it is giving that brings favor to prayers. Verse 25. Ladies and gentlemen, many have prayed dry prayers that go nowhere. Cornelius' prayers found favor. Did you know why? There are men who pray briefly see the supernatural. There are men who lose their voices till they join God and start pushing the people to go down. There are prayers that have found favor. That's why there are men who decree who just say things. 
and there's an atmosphere that changes. There are prayers that are found. For, listen to me very well, particularly you, my fellow young ministers. You need God's favor on your preaching. You need God's favor on your writings. You need God's favor on your songs. You need God's favor on your prayer. You can pray dry prayers. Look at verse 25. And David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord he did the prayers for the land and the plague was withdrawn. That's the day prayer was helped. A sacrifice is the help that if prayer needs help, prayer warrior, you will die helpless. I've seen people who prayed until they are just like this. You know, you know, I lived in Karura Forest. In Karura Forest, you'll see some men that are looking scary. They have been there, they're about to die. You are saying, my brother, how long? Say, till the Lord will speak to me. You ask him, what are you looking for? My ministry cannot be the same. You have to understand there is a difference in terms of prayers. I prayed over a dear fellow man of God's ministry on a Sunday. And this is the prayer I prayed. I said, Lord, but the covenants I have with you make things easy in this ministry. Things have never remained the same. It was not a shouting prayer. Sacrifice is the oil of prayer. Sacrifice is the grease of prayer. That's why. Look at Cornelius. When David raised an altar, David had been praying before. He even told God, forgive me. Remove the plague. God in here. But when sacrifice was in place, God heeded the prayers for the land. Now look at Cornelius. Verse number two. Verse number three. Okay, verse number two. Verse number two. Look at verse number two. A devout man and one who feared God with all his household. He didn't only fear God, he gave generously to the people. And listen, giving came before prayer. When the angel of God came to Cornelius, a man that was not born again, do you know that all this was before he was born again? There are spiritual principles that can make God follow an unbeliever. While a Christian is dying in Kodogo, Hodo, Kodogo, Hodo, Kodogo, Hodo, until he asks God, Jehovah, Mado Uko, Baba, Ulienda Wapi, Nakulia Sasa, Uniambi Ulienda Gawapi. And God is following a believer, the an unbeliever. There are things that may make God look at the church as a waste of time. I was driving down here today from some prayer with mama. A man built a property somewhere down here. There's a hotel built somewhere down here. Then at the end of it, he has built a church. On almost an acre. A permanent church. And he has put a pastor there. The man is not born again. He has put a pastor there to be preaching and he pays the pastor's salary. He built the hotel and gave God his portion. He's not born again. He owns most of that territory. While there's a Christian who is insulting his pastor over 10 mabatis that he gave. And he's busy. One day, Jehovah, he will lift us. Hinda, 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 hinda. And God will leave hinda and follow an unbeliever. While Cornelius is doing this, he's not saved. It is a man feared God before being saved. What kind of a man will he be when he gets born again? Look at this. 
about the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, you are prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. God is not just touched like that. The man didn't just pray. Your prayer and your sacrifice has come before God as a memory that cannot be erased. Can I tell you this? There's a place a man gets with God in sacrifice that even if he misses out on God, don't dare him. Sacrifices don't die. Somebody said, I don't know how true it is, that most of the prime ministers of Israel until today, if you study their lineage, they are connected to King David. David entered the place where God told him, the throne will belong to you and your descendants forever. That's why kwa mganga ukose mtoto mwenye mekaivi. <laughs> Sacrifice at work. Sacrifice went to the spams of generations. When <laughs> there's a place to touch in God that generations to come when you will be gone your grandchildren will ordain presidents yeah. Hannah presented a sacrifice that made her son ordain the heads of states of Israel Penina had children but they are not mentioned in the Bible but the day Hannah took Samuel to church the blood that, 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 that fell on the altar I marked the destiny of the child. Don't just do ministry. I want you to do ministry from the place of sacrifice. I, I, I don't just sing. I want you to sing from the place of sacrifice. There are dimensions that affect generations that are not yet born. Listen. Your prayers and your giving have come before God. There are things you do on earth that put up a case before God. When a witch carries a goat in the name of someone, he has taken the man's case. I will be getting into that. He has removed the case from earth. He has brought the case before Satan. Satan is the one handling the case. We have believers that are trying to handle things by themselves that the people they are fighting with in the office have transferred to the devil. I prayed with a family in Lovington that somebody used to ring a bell in their ears every night. If they sleep in the bedroom, they hear a bell. Kring, kring, they all run to the living room. Sacrifice was ringing a bell. Who is Lala Kwa bedroom? I confess to you, I don't live an ordinary Christian life. One time, a young preacher was having some issues with me. Then he told somebody, he's like, I'm praying against him. And I made this statement. I said, <laughs> young man. Now, when I call you young man, doesn't mean I'm very old. I mean spiritual territories. I said, young man, in case I have to pray against you, it will not be me to pray against you. I will write your name on a piece of paper. I will send it to the widows who eat, leave, take their children to school. And when other women are waiting for their husbands December holidays, they are waiting for pastor. I will send your name to them. They will use their tears to send you where their husbands are. There's a place of sacrifice that makes you confident. I cannot die like a fool. Don't just say it. Get there. Sacrifice brings a man in a way as a memorial before God. There are ministries you can't touch. There are ministries you can kill the pastor and escape. There are those, even the thought, 
to try is enough to finish you. Because men have built walls around them. You are sa now, the prayers of Cornelius, he wasn't born again, but there's something added to it. Sacrifice is the grace of prayer. Let's look at the last one. Tomorrow I take you to another dimension. Shout in the name of Jesus. I decree my prayer life will not be an ordinary prayer. My prayer will carry the favor of God by my sacrifice. In 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 10. Why was God pleased with the prayer of Solomon? Men pray, but the Bible says, and God was pleased that Solomon had asked. Solomon didn't pray a long prayer, that Solomon had asked for. God was happy that Solomon had asked. When God looked at a thousand burnt offerings on the altar, he was excited with the prayer of Solomon. I hear people saying, you are God who cannot be bribed. My brother, go and reevaluate that statement. The way the stadium behaves when some men enter. There are men who enter a stadium and the atmosphere changes. There are men who stand to preach in the market. They are preaching and the madman is also talking. <laughs> Pastor Victor told me that a man tried to cast out a demon from one, and the demon said, He dooms yet to any quarter. Let me tra translate. A man, a man of God was trying to cast out a demon, and the demon said, You are smelling feces, leave me alone. You, you can't cast me out. So the demon chose another pastor, said, This one can cast me out. No, you know, you, you are smelling feces. Can, what kind of rejection is that? <laughs> <What's> kind of, <laughs> what, kind of, <laughs> what kind of rejection is that? What kind of embarrassment is that? When demons choose who can cast them out. <laughs> Solomon presented a sacrifice in a way that when he prayed, when he, God said, ask, it wasn't Solomon asking. It was God telling Solomon, ask. And when Solomon asked, the Bible says, can you put it in the Good News Translation, verse number 10, that's the last. The Good News Translation. The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. God was pleased. Sacrifice is the grace of prayer. I've taught in this ministry for many years. We are turning 12 years, 2021. King's Gathering will be 12 years old. I've taught for a number of days. I've taught seasons. I've said, never embark on a long fast just like that. Don't just tie your bags, you're going to fast. Just like that. When you see me declare these days we are praying, what is on the ground here is heavy. Then I have my Daily giving every day I'm praying. Daily heavy commitment for the 60 days. So that at the end of it, God may say, your prayers and your giving has come up as a memorial before me. Sacrifices as the insurances in the day of trouble. Leave alone the insurance of the blood of Jesus. Don't use that as, a, that as an excuse. There are things you do that ensure your future. There are things you do that ensure your ministry. There are things you do that ensure that you can't buy anything from God. Reevaluate re that statement. Don't live an ignorant life. There are things that heaven visits the day Satan has planned an appointment with premature death. For your child. You can't give that sacrifice that day. You must have given it before. That's why Job would give and say, maybe. He wasn't even sure. Maybe one of my children may have insulted God. I don't want God to keep it in the record. 
I go into divine records and shift things in my favor by my sacrifice. Heaven doesn't just respond. The Lord was pleased. New, um, a message translation of that. That's the last one. The Lord was pleased. May you not pray empty prayers. I pray that after tonight, your prayers will carry grace. Your prayers will carry grace. Your prayers will carry favor. Every day, with all humility, the number of requests I get, man of God, say something. You can't read all of them. Sometimes I'm tempted to ask him, don't you have a mouth? Yes, we have a mouth, but our mouths have eaten different things. Have you ever heard people who are not born again saying, no, no, They're saying that man has a bad mouth. If he curses you. Ahitophel had a mouth that if he speaks, you'd think someone has consulted from the oracle. May you make your mouth dangerous by your sacrifices. May men fear your words. One of the queens of the earth feared the prayers of John Knox more than he feared a, a, a raiding army of an enemy. She said, the only thing I fear is the prayer of John Knox. Men make their prayers dangerous. We live in a dangerous world you can't survive in with a harmless mouth. A hand that has no sacrifice results in a mouth that is harmless. You preach in a market the whole week. When you live there, you get kaswende. That's the harvest you have carried for preaching somewhere for a whole week. You left no damage. May your words damage the kingdom of darkness. Somebody say amen. May your words damage the kingdom of darkness. May your prayers be like bullets in the camp of the enemy. Put your hands together for Jesus. I refuse to pray dry prayers. Empower my words when I stand on an altar. Lord, don't let my words fall to the ground. Your prayer should be, Lord, don't embarrass what I said. Don't declare here the year of God's favor. Then by February you change. May empty Christianity not be part of your life. Change your dimension. Change your level. Change your level. Change where you operate from. Speak simple words. Let them have dangerous damage and impact. There are men who don't shout when they are preaching. They speak softly. But the manifestations that follow their words because of the sacrifices that follow what they say. There are men who do and if you look at what Jehovah was fanyaring and persuading may you not be like that. Preaching is not sounding like you're about to die. It is not what you are saying. It is what backs what you are saying. Back up your words. Step out of the ordinary. Dear, I always don't like addressing senior ministers. I address young ministers who look up to me. I came to show you how to shift your ministry from being common. May your ministry be on demand. May men tell that there is something on you that cannot be debated. And how, do you, how does that happen? Don't just be a prayer warrior. Prayer is good. I enjoy prayer. We are in 60 days. This is day 3. But grace your prayer. Add grace to your prayer. Watch Elijah at Mount Carmel after presenting a sacrifice. Look at the prayer he prayed. He said, now Lord God, 
let it be known. One time I was preaching somewhere. I, I taught and taught and taught and taught. The place was jam packed. People are hungry for God. Then I said, Father, I've spoken your word. Now confirm they were not the words of a man. The whole place changed. You know you can say that and listen to see if the father is going to confirm anything. And heaven is not doing anything. Then you say Jehovah. Then you, the moment you change the prayer, people will notice. Then you say, all right, you are not moving. Let me help you. Start throwing them to the floor. Throwing them to the floor. Throwing them to the floor. And men can tell. May God back you up. May God back you up. May God back up what you say. Add oil to your prayer. Grease your prayer. Shift your dimension. There are meetings before you stand there. Ensure you left something on the ground behind. Ensure you made a covenant with God. Did you hear what Jacob said? And if you will keep me in the way that I go. And give me food to eat. And I come back. I will visit this place. Men enter contracts with God. Don't just be, don't just be an empty Christian. Enter contracts. Access dimensions. Deal with God differently. Let God have, sir, get a special coded phrase that is identified with you. Do you have your spiritual code? I know you won't understand what I'm saying. There are things I don't mention every day when I preach. But there are meetings when you hear me mention something. I don't mention it every day. It is my password in the spirit. You can't build a password if you have no account there. Password to where? If you have nothing that men can access, you don't have a password. You are just obvious. God comes to you by accident. In the name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Blood of blood of Jesus. Walk with the God you are sure of. We walk in with him by faith. But there is a place where you know. Where you are sure. Paul said we know. In whom we have believed. And we know that he is able. To take care of that which you commit to him. Online, prepare your offerings. I've shared enough. Anything you need is possible. If you look up to me as a man that carries something that can change your life, tonight, package something. We're going to give to God. And I dare you, give what you didn't plan to give. Those apostles. They died for the gospel. They were not afraid of persecution because it was real. This thing was real to them. <laughs> Don't let God be real to you in preaching and be fake to you during giving. The reason you'll never reach some things is because you always go offline at the most important time. Now you know how we do it after you give for the purposes of pronouncement and speaking of the blessing. You copy the transaction and send it to WhatsApp on the same number that is there. My work is to speak these grace words over your life. 90.7 Truth FM tomorrow morning 8.15 tune in you will hear something that will change your life. God has anointed me for tomorrow's show. Listen and hear things will happen. As we give tonight, there are loans that will be paid off miraculously. There are cars that will be paid off miraculously. There are wedding bills that will be paid off miraculously. There are some of you saving money to do something and I hear in the spirit you are not supposed to save for that thing. Give out that money and see God. Give it to God and see God. 
Sometimes the test is God taking what you are saving to give you what you are saving for. I've seen that a number of times. I don't play with giving. And I truly want to open your eyes and give you what I know and what works for me. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. Every man that is obeying your voice, bless them. Every man responding to what they have heard, do what only you can do in their lives. Bless them. Grant them grace to function in the realm of sacrifice. The results we have seen as a result of living a sacrificial life, may they see the same. I thank you that tonight there will be financial riot, riot of the supernatural. Tomorrow we will read what you have done tonight. And we give you glory for this can only be you. In Jesus' name, and everyone say it, amen. We wind up for this week tomorrow night. Don't miss. Stay tuned. God bless you all of you online. Shalom. Thank you for obedience and becoming a blessing. And may the God of this altar follow your life and bless your life. Those in the house, let's rise up as we drop our...